We liked USB because it simplified plugging in a wide range of devices that used to all have different connections. But if you're using it to copy files, you might be noticing that even USB 2 is slower than the internal hard disk. The latest version, USB 3, should solve this problem with the capability to transfer up to 5 gigabits per second. That's really fast. If you don't already have any USB 3 sockets on your computer, it's simple to add some with an expansion card. This video will show how to add a card to a desktop computer. You will need a screwdriver and the computer must have a spare PCI Express slot. Now you should check to make sure that there is a spare PCI Express slot before buying a USB 3 card. The other kind of common slot, PCI, is older and can't transfer data fast enough to take advantage of USB 3. If the available slot is long with a notch block on the right, then you have a PCI slot. They're normally white, but sometimes they're another colour, like the blue one here. There are two kinds of PCI Express slots that you're likely to find in your computer. PCI Express 1X slots are very short with a block near the middle, as for this one here. PCI Express is also used for graphics cards, and they use PCI Express 16X slots. If you're using the integrated graphics on your motherboard as we are here, or you have a spare 16 x slot, you can use that as well. In this case, you want a card such as the Freecom USB 3 controller that we've got here. The Freecom card needs to have its software installed first, so before you take the side off the computer, insert the CD into the optical drive and follow the wizard to install the drivers. Once that's done, shut the computer down, unplug all the cables, especially the power, and put it on a convenient surface to install the card. Now, you might want to use an anti-static wrist strap to protect the computer while you're working, but you're probably fine if you earth yourself on, say, the bare metal pipe going into a radiator. As you can see here, we've already got the side off the computer. So locate the free slot that you want to use and remove the backing plate from the side. You'll want to save the screw to fit the card in when you're done, but you won't need the backing plate anymore. Line up the connectors on the card with the slot and then push it in. Once it's in place, screw it back in. And this is important for cards such as USB 3 controllers because you'll be plugging and unplugging devices in quite a bit and that'll put some stress on the card. Now there's one final step with a USB 3 card. Because it's supposed to deliver power to devices as well as transfer data, it'll need to be connected to the power supply of the computer. And it does this using a Molex connector. This is a fairly chunky connector with just four sockets on it. Now they're normally white, but this one here is black. Line it up with the card and push it in. And this one will need a reasonable amount of force. That's it, the card's installed. Put the case back on the computer connect all the cables up again and switch it on. Windows will now detect the card and install the drivers that you installed earlier. One useful extra touch is that Windows now knows that there are USB 3 sockets available and it will display a warning if you plug a USB 3 device into any of the other USB sockets on the computer, even though they'll still work just much slower. Congratulations, you're now able to use the faster speeds of USB 3.